is misguided or rather has no um, set policy or procedure and is, uh, to use your word, is, has no uh, direction. The thing to realize is this, we're dealing with amorphous groups that are not necessarily clearly defined, non-state actors that are not necessarily clearly identified, and we're dealing with a situation that has changed radically since the advent of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act of 1976. The world has changed dramatically. Most people in this room were not even a glint in their mother and father's eye at that time. So the thing to recognize is that, yes, there are problems. And I'm not here to necessarily defend the indefensible. But I'm here to pre pre present what I feel are viewpoints that will let you understand that there are provisions that work. And the thing and the old saying, the squeaky wheel always gets the grease. The end of the, at the end of the day, I believe that the percentages of problems that do occur and the percentages of problems that occur with this administration, and believe me, I'll be the first one to go on record because it's being videotaped. I'm no fan of the administration. I'm not here to toe the party line by any stretch of the imagination. But I feel that for those problems that occur, and we're here to discuss human rights and that things like torture and Abu Ghraib and et cetera, represent a minority, a small percentage in the overall scope of things. Amnesty International recently came out with its own studies that said 75% of nations around the world engage in some form, some form of torture, be it physical and or mental coercion, 75% of the world's nations. So it's not as necessarily we are the source of all evil in the world. We've been talking, um, when talking about the Patriot Act, we've been talking about generalities for the mm -hmm. most part. I'm wondering if we could discuss, in effect, what difference the Patriot Act makes in ways in which people in this room might experience. In other words, can we bring this down to um, um, civil liberties on the ground, questions of security on the ground? What are the specifics that, in effect, may impinge on the lives of uh, folks just like us. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about the uh, landmark case that came out from the New Jersey Supreme Court that I uh, was very happy to have a hand in. Uh, it was issued just, just the other day. It's a criminal case, and uh, the uh, ruling of the Supreme Court stands for two propositions. One is that when you are using the Internet anonymously, you have a reasonable expectation of privacy. The second proposition is that the constraints on the law enforcement community that apply in meat space, shall we say, also apply in cyberspace. Now this is a very significant ruling because the attitude of the um, Attorney General who uh, was arguing in this case was that, well, anything you do in public, you have no expectation of privacy. And as far as the Attorney General was concerned, cyberspace is public, and therefore you have no expectation of privacy. Now, this uh, it can be uncomfortable for us for, for a number of reasons. Like, let's say you have something completely innocuous like hemorrhoids, right? Um, and you want to look on the web and see if there's anything that, that you can get. You, you, do, you do think that you have a kind of privacy. Uh, but then also with respect to things that, that touch on uh, disfavored groups like Arabs, Muslims, terrorists, and so on. Um, I think the, the, the little story I can recount that I think brings this home is I was talking to a group of high school kids. Uh, they were mostly South Asian from immigrant families. And they said to me, you know, I'd kind of like to do a high school social studies report on militant <coughs> Islam. Because at my mosque, you know, the imam is saying that Islam is a religion of, of peace and tolerance. But then I turn on the TV, and I'm told it's all about violence. So for my social studies class, I'd like to do a report on this. I'm afraid to do any research on the computer because I'm afraid the FBI will come to my <coughs> house in the middle of the night and my family will be deported. <coughs> So the ruling of the Supreme Court is that when you're on the internet anonymously, uh, you have a reasonable expectation of privacy. Now I hear a phone ringing, and I just, I just want to ask right quick um, a little uh, question for the audience. 
just hit the right How many people are aware that if you're making a phone call on an old-fashioned phone that has a cord that goes into the wall, how many people are aware that, that the FBI needs a search warrant to listen in on that phone conversation? Okay, more than half the audience knows about that. And, you, and are you aware that that is not true with respect to cell phones? That cell phones are more like glorified radios? Um, and the, and the police can just listen in without get without getting a search warrant first. So the thing that pertains to day t for us day to day has to do with our expectation of privacy as we go about our daily affairs, doing things that are you know ordinary, sometimes very personal, sometimes sensitive, and also a question about the power of the police to monitor your daily ordinary life. So um, the Patriot Act, I think, has created a, a sense that, well, maybe the police should be able to listen to everything. But I don't think that's right. And um, fortunately, the New Jersey Supreme Court agrees that's not always right. I, I you know, coming from law enforcement and for 20 years, I, I am not aware of any wiretaps where we did not have a warrant on a cell phone usage. I, that that was even surprising well, to me. You, you know, you know about the warrantless wiretapping program that the national security. Yeah, but you, you is what you said was the police, correct? Yeah, I'm so talking about. So to me, the, that means yeah. the police. Right. I think that has to be. You have to nuance what you were saying. Yeah. No, I, I don't want. I, I actually don't want to nuance it. I want to talk about the um, the climate created by the USA Patriot Act. I think that the USA Patriot Act has created a climate in which. Um, the, uh, the FBI and law enforcement generally have said it should be okay for us to conduct surveillance in all aspects of your life. In fact, there's a suggestion that you should be willing to give up your civil liberties in order to feel safer. And so I think that, that the Patriot Act has created this climate, and I think the climate might be shifting now. And we should demand a reasonable expectation. Yeah, actually, I agree that the climate is shifting, but it's shifting in more towards the, um, the, the I, don't, I hate this whole left and right thing. I really do. But it's more towards the um, uh, pro-liberty, pro-civil liberty view. Oh, yeah. Do you view. see that? But, oh, I totally, I, I agree with you okay. because I, I based, I said that earlier, that 70%. You know, I first started teaching these courses that, as well as it's been documented, that, you know, every, you know everybody was hoo-rah-rah behind the Patriot Act, uh, you know, when it first came out. And now we see the pendulum swinging the other way. And, and the, 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 what I'm reading is pr pretty much reflective of what I'm seeing in my student class. It's about 50, 40 percent. And I see, see how it's swung the other way. Um, however, what I just wanted to make clear was that the fact is, is that the, you know, you don't have to worry about local law enforcement going in and listening into your private cell phone calls uh, on a daily basis without a warrant. That I, I, I think we can agree is you need a warrant for I, I local would, law enforcement. I wish that were true. Yeah. Okay, let, let's, but this is important because I think okay. every student here probably has a cell phone. Right. And we want to understand the limits of privacy in this regard. Yeah, I, I, I would just say... Let, let me ask, let me just, in terms of this barber, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, there may be, yes, indeed, there's a climate of fear and intimidation right. and so forth that comes out of the Patriot Act. We, even if we agree with that, and I mm -hmm. personally agree with that, the technical question is, to what extent do the police need, or the FBI, need a warrant in order to tap your cell phone, and to what extent can they do it without a warrant? In other words, what level of privacy can our students expect when they make, a, make or receive a cell phone call? Okay, I'm very, so I'm very sorry to say that the current state of, the state of things in the United States is that the National Security Agency is conducting warrantless wiretapping of whoever they want. And um, I think that that violates uh, uh, countless laws, but it, it violates the USA Patriot Act. So I think the, the USA Patriot Act is bad enough, but it's clear that this warrantless wiretapping is also violating the USA Patriot Act. So it seems to me <clears throat> to be <clears throat> excuse me, completely lawless. I and the, 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 the take-home message I would like to um, convey has to do with the take-home message of, of this Supreme Court decision, which is 
that you do have a reasonable expectation of privacy inside.